Hello guys, uh, we are meeting after a long time, yeah, but I was busy and I was asked to make a lecture about fluid and electrolyte management in surgery by one of the students, so I made this. I have written it is controversial topic, the reason being there is no consensus, second thing there are so many guidelines, I have made this lecture from the nice guidelines and maintenance. I have applied 4 to 1 rule, I took help of my friends also, so this is a combined effort still, there will be controversy, so I tried it to make it as simple as possible just to understand and what to do. So let us start. A fluid and uh, the fluid management in surgical patients, uh, you know I have written already the controversial topic. Now, human are made up predominantly of water that is 50 to 70 percent of body weight and human being is water the body has three compartments in which water resides it is intracellular intravascular and the interstitial compartment or we can say intracellular and extracellular compartment and the intervascular and interstitial are the part of extracellular compartment now the water shift rapidly between these compartments so this is the human body 70% is made up of water. Now male has 60% of total body weight as water. In females the value is 50% and in newborn it is 70%. <clears throat> of this two third is an intracellular fluid. One third is an extracellular fluid. Of extracellular fluid. One fourth is an intravascular space and three fourth is an interstitium. I'll explain all this by an example. Let us assume a 70 kg male total body water is 60% of 70, so 42 liters. Now intracellular fluid is two thirds, so two third of 42 becomes 28 liters as an intracellular compartment. Now ECF extracellular fluid has one third of 42 that is 14 liters of this intravascular volume is one fourth of ECF that is 70 multiplied by 60 by 100 by one third multiplied by one fourth so it is 3.5 liter that is human body has a uh, 70 kg person has 3.5 liter of blood in the intravascular sp uh, space and the interstitial fluid is again by same calculation 10.5 liters. We will re-emphasize this later. Now, the main intracellular cations are potassium, magnesium and the main intracellular anions are phosphate and the proteins. The main extracellular cation is sodium and the anions are chloride and bicarbonate. For maintenance, thus remember this, for maintenance of hydration, it is necessary for fluid to distribute into all the compartments. For fluid resuscitation, we want the fluid to remain in the intravascular space, improving tissue perfusion by raising the intravascular volume. So fluid should stay within the intravascular space. Now you should know about the types of the fluids. These are crystalloids, colloids and the blood products. In crystalloids, these are small molecules. So they flow easily across the membranes. They expand both interstitial and the intravascular spaces. Again, they can be isotonic, hypotonic and the hypertonic solutions. Colloids are solutions that contain large molecules. They remain in intravascular space when infused. Then we have blood products, pexel volume, fresh frozen plasma or platelets. Now, some words about crystalloids. The isotonic types. Example is 0.9% NaCl that is normal saline. In this sodium is 154. You can see millic melts or millimole. Chloride is 154. It is fluid of choice. The ring and lactate is also a fluid of choice. In this, the composition is sodium 130, chloride 109, potassium 4, calcium is 3, bicarbonate 28, and it has lactate also. Ring and lactate metabolizes in liver in which lactate get converted into the bicarbonate. The isotonic other fluid is 5% extol, that is isotonic but after metabolism it becomes hypotonic and fluid shifts into cells from intravascular space. So, it 
is less of use if you just want to maintain uh, volume intravascular volume the ringer is same as ringer lactate but it does not have lactate now some examples of hypotonic fluids these are 0.45 percent NaCl 2.5 percent extols osmolality is less than 250 isotonic obviously they have more than 310 isosmotic to the body these are used in patient having intracellular dehydration like hypernatremia or diabetic ketoacidosis hyperosmolic hyperglycemic state then we have hypertonic fluids these are volume expanders because they remain in intracellular volume because because of high osmolarity they attract the water from outer compartment and they, they do not leave the intravascular space 3% NACL used in severe hyponatremia and cerebral edema D5NS is also hypertonic fluid now we come to colloids these are volume expanders maintain intravascular volume when infused like hypertonic crystalloids they have longer duration of action because they remain in intravascular space examples are 5% albumin hydroxyethyl starch now how will you assess the fluid status in a patient clinically for fluid depletion you should note if the tongue is dry it is depleted if the skin is dry it is depleted if the patient feels thirsty even while he is or she is on intravenous fluid it is fluid depletion if the urine output is low it is fluid depletion and again if the bp is low fluid depletion how will you assess the fluid overload clinically edema pulmonary or peripheral anything fluid overload if the gbp is raised again it is fluid overload now this is a chart Oh, before chat, we should uh, know the aim of the fluid resuscitation. It may be for maintenance, like patient is NPO simply and uh, can't take orally, and we are supplementing the basic daily requirement. It may be for resuscitation, patient is in shock or something like that, may be intubated, and the patient requires a rapid replacement or the uh, addition of fluid. So, it is resuscitation, or it may be replacement some component may be depleted or less than the normal that can be replaced by the fluid now this is the flow chart from the nice guideline you should remember this if you remember this flow chart you will be handling any case what should be given okay first of all you should ask does patient need fluid resuscitation the answer may be yes or no if the answer is no then you should ask can patient meet if fluid electrolyte needs enterly, if the answer is yes, simply give enteral nutrition, nothing to do. Now, if the answer to this question is no, then again you have to ask, assess fluid and electrolyte needs. Does it has complex fluid electrolyte displacement, uh, replacement and normal distribution issue? The answer may be no. So, simply, if there is no complex fluid or electrolyte replacement and normal distribution issue, you should give routine maintenance. I will tell you the routine maintenance in detail. If the answer is yes, then again, replacement and redistribution should be done. How? Are existing fluid or electrolyte excess or deficit? Either excess or deficit. If the answer is yes, then correct in addition to maintenance. Obviously, you should give maintenance in addition to that replacement and distribution may be done. If the answer is no, are there any ongoing fluid loss? The answer again can be yes or no. If the answer is yes, then correct it. If the answer is no, then you should seek expert opinion. Now, the first question, does patient need resuscitation? If the answer is yes, then obviously resuscitate. How? You will give 500 bolus of crystalloid stat. Then again, you will reassess ABCD, airway, breathing, circulation, disability and maybe electrolyte. Again, you will see, does patient still need resuscitation? Answer may be yes or no. If the answer is no, 
again you should check does patient has signs of shock answer may be no then you give maintenance if he has signs of shock expert opinion because you have resuscitated and he or she is still in shock if, if you are surgeon obviously maybe patient bleeding and you have to explore if the answer to the first question does patient still need resuscitation you should give at least two liter of fluid again if he doesn't improve expert opinion that is exploration if you are a surgeon the daily requirement or maintenance in a 60 kg meal this is an example you should listen to it and see this carefully these are from my guidelines and also for the one rule the daily water requirement is 20 to 30 milliliter per kg per day of water that is 1800 ml according to nice guidelines or it may be 2400 ml by 4 to 1 rule. I'll tell you what is 4 to 1 rule. 1 millimole per kg per day of sodium, potassium and chloride. Everything that is 1 millimole per kg per day. That is 60 millimole kg per day for a 60 kg meal. Now the glucose requirement is 50 to 100 gram per day of glucose. Now maintenance fluid. When patient is NPO or on ventilator and cannot take orally, you should give maintenance fluid. The rule which applies or we are using is 4 to 1 rule or it can also be called as a weight plus 40 rule if the patient's weight is more than 40 kg. I will explain. The 4 is 4 ml per kg per hour for first 10 kgs. Then 2 ml per kg per hour for next 10 kgs. Then 1 ml per kg for hour for next whatever left kgs. Also if the patient is above 40 kg then simply add 40 to the weight. Now we will see the example. Fluid requirement of a 60 kg male will be 4 ml per kg per hour for 10 kgs first is 40 kg for next 10 kg it is 20 for next remaining is 40 kg so it is 1 ml per kg per hour it is 40 kg so 40 plus 20 plus 40 is 100 ml <laughs> per hour for one day it is 24 ml obviously it is 100 ml per hour multiply by 24 hour it is 2400 ml or alternatively weight plus 40 formula weight is 60 kg plus 40 so 100 ml per hour again it comes out to be the same now how to calculate fluid rate again fluid rate can be calculated in ml per hour or liter per hour or drops per minute simply the blood set the IV set and the micro drip set we get in our walls have some drop factors blood set is 10 drops factor per ml, I mean 10 drops per ml, IV set has 15 to 16 drops per ml and micro drip 60 to 64 drops per ml. The formula to calculate the rate is volume in ml multiplied by drop factor divided by time. Let us see the example. If you want to give 500 ml of fluid in 4 hours through IV set, then you have to use the formula volume drop factor by time so volume is 500 ml drop factor is 15 because it is IV set you remember this and the time in minutes so 4 hours multiply by 60 this comes out to be 31 drops per minute over 4 hours simple the final example and we will conclude this because if you can solve this example then you can give any fluid to the patient because maintenance fluid is most important for replacement you will add the deficit amount and for resuscitation you need fast fluids so that urine output is becoming more now 60 kg male post op day 1 elective surgery 24 hour fluid requirement would be requirements as per nice guidelines if we calculate sodium 60 millimole Chloride 60 millimole, dextose 100 gram, 500 ml will give adequate NaCl. How? One bottle of 500 ml NaCl contains 77 ml equivalents of sodium or millimoles and 77 again of potassium. We have seen the quantity of normal saline that was for one liter. 
that has 154 154 for 500 ml it is 77 so it will give 60 milliohms one ml uh, one vac of saline 500 ml 5% dextose means it is means not mean 5 gram in 100 ml so 400 gram dextose 2000 ml fluid is needed so the order would be total fluid order by applying 421 rule 421 rule we need 2400 ml so one normal saline plus 4 d5 at the rate of 100 ml per hour should be the answer if you have any doubt or anything you can ask in the comment section i'll explain because this is very complicated topic because fluid resuscitation is not covered in this and the replacement may be having some doubts but still this is for maintenance fluid and basic things about fluid management in surgery so thank you